I'm still very excited about Mike Zimmer's defense, so we'll continue to talk about it. But tonight, we'll dive into four players that have already proven that they will have big seasons for the Cowboys. Let's get to it. What is up, everyone, and welcome to ADZ Sports Dallas Primetime. I am your host, Mauricio Rodriguez, streaming with you live every Sunday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Central and catching up with you Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with quick hitting videos such as this one. On Monday, we had a show talking about how the Marvin Overshown was going to be a star for the Cowboys because that is the talk of the nation right now. No one can get enough of Overshown, and for good reason. We waited so long to see him on a regular season game. And when he did show up, he was just playing lights out. Uh, Mike Zimmer with an interesting tidbit of information on today's, or actually yesterday's press conference. Uh, Zimmer revealed that the Cowboys were actually asking or were shown to spy on Deshaun Watson. So when you see that a play of Overshown just reacting so well to Watson getting out of the pocket and just how he flies to the ball carrier and tackles him behind the line of the scrimmage for a sack. Uh, that's also because he was under this assignment of just spy on Deshaun Watson. They, were, they wanted to force him to throw the football. They wanted him to work from the pocket, which he struggled to do in 2023 and then struggled again to do in 2024. So Mike Zimmer was like, we're not, we're not playing games. He's not going to do this with his feet. If he's going to beat us, it's going to be with his arm. It's going to be with his mind. Did neither of those. And instead, the Browns ended up looking like one of the biggest messes in the NFL. Because, man, that's a conversation for another show, maybe. But, like, the Browns are in trouble. Fortunately for us, we're not covering that side of the story. We are covering the Cowboys and the Cowboys' defense. So, after discussing overshown in detail... Yesterday, I wanted to go over some other names, including Overshown. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to include Overshown on this list. Some Cowboys players that I already proved in one week that they're going to have monster seasons in 2024. Now, it's only week one, but it's a good time in the year to overreact. And that's what we're going to do today. But these are things that I sincerely believe. So I'm not doing this in a hot take kind of style. Overshown is going to be huge. I'm just going to start there. Overshown is going to have a huge season for Dallas, just starting by the mere fact that he is going to be starting, right? This is not Damon Clark's job anymore. And I like Damon Clark, and I think the Cowboys like Damon. I think they like his versatility. They like that he can play Mike, Sam, Will, whatever they ask him to do. They like that he had a lot of experience learning the defense last year. They like all of that. Obviously, a different defense, but I mean the linebacker position. Because he was out there telling Marquise Bell what to do before every snap, right? So it was a learning experience for him. Overshown just completely wiped out any possibility of a linebacker battle. I think many of us thought that, hey, Overshown might be the backup to these two guys, Kendricks and Clark. But after week one, like there's no question anymore. Overshown is the guy. I thought he was going to end up being the guy. But the Cowboys clearly think he's ready. And he proved that uh, with a monster game. In week one that we went into detail yesterday and I'm sure you've seen a lot of highlights out of him but yesterday I did talk about one play that I couldn't show the old 22 to and now I can thanks to Foods the King man shout out to him always doing a great job over on Twitter and on his YouTube channel this is the play that I couldn't stop talking about yesterday so I'm gonna just take this opportunity and discuss it in bigger detail because I'm gonna talk about these two guys Overshone and Kendricks they're both Two out of the four players that I believe prove they're going to have monster seasons with Mike Zimmer. And I'm excluding Trevon Diggs, Micah Parsons from this list because they maybe would be way too obvious. But look at this play right here. The Browns are going to run to the left. Look at the guard, number 77. He's going to pull from the right side to lead the way, right? So we're going to see him lead the way here. Look at what Overshone is doing here. We're looking, we, we, we will look at it at, at it full speed, right? Boom, right there. He's forcing the ball back inside, but he is doing it with violence. Look at Overshone. First and foremost, man, he, he identifies what the guard is doing. Right here, he knows what is going down. He knows number 77 is pulling, and he's going to attack his shoulder 
upfield and then, hey, show collar, as coaches would like to say that. You know, show the white jersey in there, force number 34 back inside. And then Kendricks comes in, finishes the play. But now, focus on Kendricks all play long, right? Flowing with the offense. There you go. Boom. He stacks right there on the gap. He's like, where is this play going? I got to be ready for the backside. Sees that there is no cutback coming his way. Blocker out of the way. Boom. Kendricks with the big tackle. Seems like a simple play, maybe. We we'll look at it from the other side. But this is what the Cowboys did not have and couldn't do in 2024. The Cowboys couldn't stop the run with a light box like this. They, can, they couldn't get six players on the box and be successful with them. In fact, I have some numbers for you. Let me, I got to actually open this up because I haven't published this article. I'm still working on it. But the Cowboys last year, they were one of the teams that used the least light boxes in the NFL, 27th in the league, actually. And let me open here to give you the full stat that I had built up for the article. So the Cowboys were 27th in the NFL using a light box. And when they did use a light box, they were the third worst defense in the entire NFL in success rate, according to Sports Info Solutions. So if they had six players on that box, they were screwed. Third worst in the NFL versus the run. You know why that was? Because they didn't have a linebacker that could, one, take on the offensive lineman like Overshone does in that play, and two, another linebacker to really read that in real time, react like Kendricks does there, and make the play. The Cowboys had big-time athletes last year that could just shoot the gap and be awesome athletes and maybe get the tackle for a loss, but what you saw just now was gap discipline, it was high IQ football from both of them because Overshone identifying that pulling backside guard was pretty damn special. The Cowboys then can play with two high safeties because they can trust the light box and they can trust that they won't get destroyed by the opponent's running game. That is huge for Dallas, man. When you wonder why were the Cowboys top 10 in EPA for a play last year and yet they were one of the worst teams in success rate, is because they couldn't do it from every defensive look. They had to load the box to be able to stop the run and get tackles for loss, which is why they had uh, big EPA per play numbers, but not big success rate numbers, because they could run on them. They just happened to make some big plays along the way. So Kendricks and Overshone clearly lead the way for me in players that are going to have monster seasons. And bear in mind, Kendricks is likely not going to be an old pro or anything like that. Then again, he might, right? Because he has so many teammates flying around. Uh, but the Cowboys are going to have a top-tier mic in the NFC. And probably, as John Owning said recently on Twitter, he is the best processor at linebacker that they've had since Sean Lee. He might be the best linebacker in terms of the mic position that they've had since Sean Lee, honestly. Right, This might be the best duo the Cowboys have had in the last five years easily. You could argue that 2018 Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith was better, uh, but Overshone and Kendricks, the way that they played week one, I really think they can be one of the best duos if Overshone keeps doing what he's doing. Like We do a lot of overreactions in week one, but Overshone's debut feel, felt very real just because it was so consistent and there was so much that he did. It wasn't like two flashy plays where he showed off one key trait. No, he did pretty much everything, and he was awesome. Coverage, a spy, a spying Deshaun Watson. Man, this, this kid is, is something else. Uh, but anyways, moving on a little bit here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mention the Marcus Lawrence. You might think that's unfair because Lawrence is, m might deserve to go on the same boat as Trevon Diggs and Micah, who are not included on the list, as to not be obvious. But I would counter with this. Demarcus Lawrence is 32 years old. Every year is a question mark. He is in a contract year, by the way. Lawrence is playing for a new contract. Uh, 32 years old. Father time is always, you know, peeking its head around the corner, threatening these players. First game of the season, Lawrence has three tackles for a loss, one forced fumble, four QB hits, and two sacks. Lawrence being able to play in a defense that is being so aggressive on third down, both in a 
blitzing point of view, but also in a disguised coverage point of view. And, and with Lawrence being ready to go for 2024, apparently, he's going to have another big year, I think. For him to be at such a fast start with two sacks, defenses are going to be worried about Micah Parsons every single time. They're going to be worried about those mucked up linebackers. They're going to be worried about the slot corner blitzing because that's the big difference when Mike Zimmer blitzes compared to when Dan Quinn blitzes, right? And by the way, Dan Quinn couldn't stop the run from like the light box looks, but moving forward with the blitzes, Mike, uh, Dan Quinn sometimes blitzed, but it was only to free up Micah. I think like most of the time, the, the additional pass rushers, it wasn't like these blitzes were designed to actually get to the QB. With Mike Zimmer, that is absolutely the case, right? That's why Kendricks got his sack. That's why you saw uh, Overshone get another sack. Like Kendricks and Overshone had three sacks combined, right? Those are insane numbers for your linebackers. And that's because the blitzes are designed to get home. Whereas with Dan Quinn, they were mostly designed to manipulate pass protection schemes. And that worked very well, right? It worked very well for Micah. It gave him a lot of favorable looks. But I think just the element that Seymour adds to it, the dimension that he adds to it, is going to uh, free up a lot of opportunities for guys like Demarcus Lawrence in this case. So anyways, Lawrence, I think, is going to have a monster season. I wouldn't be surprised if it's his best in the last few years even. Uh, so cool to see that he's ready to go even at 32 years old and that he's not slowing down anytime soon. I think Lawrence might be playing his last year with Dallas, by the way, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but anyways, one more player, and maybe Monster Season could be a little bit of a overstatement, but I'll say Monster Season for a second-round rookie, Marshawn Neeland. Here's a big thing with Marshawn for me. Mike Zimmer, when, before Sam Williams was injured, he said Sam Williams was going to play 70 to 75% of the defensive snaps which is a very high number for a player that was supposed to be a backup, right? So you had Parsons and Lawrence leading the way at edge rusher, and even if they were going to move Michael Parsons around, you were still going to play him at D-line most of the time. And I wondered when Williams went down, what does that look like for Marshawn Nilland since he is the next man up? He played 58% of the snaps. That is enough for me to be, okay, we could consider Neeland a starter, basically. Because if you're playing 6 out of 10 snaps, I could make the argument that you are a starter. Maybe you don't get the official stat, right? Maybe you're not viewed as an official starter, but you are that kind of contributor for the defense. So him playing 58% of the snaps was pretty promising to me. Not only that, Marshawn Neeland, ladies and gentlemen, he had five pressures only behind Parsons and Lawrence. He had an 11.8% win rate when rushing the passer, which was higher than Lawrence's. It was higher than, you know, uh, not not uh, Micah, definitely. Some other defensive tackles that were starters. But basically it was Micah, Neeland, and then Lawrence in pass rush win rate. This guy is producing. He's playing a lot. Clearly liked by the Cowboys coaching staff. Got to dive into the film to see really how he went about it and whether or not it's sustainable because he did play against backup tackles. But the mere fact that he played 6 out of 10 snaps on Sunday tells me a lot about Marshawn Nealand and how much he's going to contribute to the Cowboys' defense. So, yep, we had to have another show geeking out about the Mike Zimmer defense. But for tonight, that will be it for me today. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll talk a lot about the Cowboys as well. Cowboys Saints is in the horizon. And the Cowboys have an advantage already, by the way, over the Saints because they're dealing with Hurricane Francine and they won't be able to practice as usual. So they might have to move around Wednesday and Thursday. We'll talk about that tomorrow as well. Thanks so much, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the like button for me and bye-bye.